Mysticism wasn't born with Kabbalah. There's tons of mysticism in the Talmud. Now, historically, this is why I say it's hard to understand Judaism without its historical component. Mysticism in the time of the Second Temple was known as Gnosticism, and it's found all over the Talmud. This is why the Talmud in itself is not a holy book. It's there to bring you the law. That's all it is. It's a plate that carries the law to you. It's not that the book itself is holy. Now, the Torah itself, the commandments in the Torah are holy. They came straight from God. The laws are there to help you keep law in a uniform manner as a nation. But there's a lot of stupid statements in the Talmud. There's a lot of beautiful statements in the Talmud. But all those statements are what's called Agadah, folklore. The law is what's authoritative. I really wanted to do a whole study on it because there is one level of study that I think it's the highest way to study what people call the oral law. Man, I was watching Inception the other day. How like you could be in a dream. Within that dream, you could be in, in someone else's dream, right? So that's how deep this actually goes. Only because something appears in the Gemara or only because something appears in the Talmud doesn't make it halakhically binding, even if it appears in a legal fashion. Why? Because one important thing that people overlook is who is speaking. There's two levels of rabbis. There's actually more than two that are mentioned, but that actually appear. There's only two levels of rabbis that appear in the Talmud. Tanaim and Amorayim. Tanaim are men with smicha. There's like a handful, maybe two or three Amorayim who also had smicha towards the end, like Rav Zeru got smicha. Amorayim, anything Amorayim bring down as a law that's not reiterated first by a Tana is not a law. And if you start studying halacha like that, you're going to open up a whole world of things you thought were prohibited that are not prohibited. Now, this is probably the most controversial thing I said tonight. This is one thing I mentioned in my last video on getting drunk on Purim. I'm against getting drunk on Purim. I'm against getting drunk at all. And not just me, the Torah is against it, although it doesn't prohibit it like a law. But we know the drunkenness of Noah, Lot, the wayward son. I brought down to the story of Rava and Rav Zera was being told over by an Amara. And it's an Amara who brings it down like binding, which means it's not a halakha because Amarayim didn't have smicha. Amarayim didn't sit on the Sanhedrin. And if that's a criteria, then it's not halakha. All the men in the Mishnah had smicha. That's why the Mishnah is the source. And the Gemara is just a commentary to the Mishnah. And these men existed all the men, all the Amorim existed when there was no longer a court. Now, Smicha existed a little longer after the Sanhedrin was abolished. As a matter of fact, to sit on the Sanhedrin, you don't even need Smicha. You needed one person within that court to have Smicha, but to be an aide, to be someone that was just going to be a witness or to vote, you didn't need Smicha. But there had to be one person with Smicha there. I mean, I'll tell you, most of the silly stuff that are brought down as halachot. But one example I just gave was getting drunk on Purim does not appear in the Mishnah. And I don't think I've ever heard a rabbi say that. Now, one of the names of my organization was Dordea. So I always said that here at Dordea, we don't tell you what to think, but we help you think in a halachic manner. The goal of every teacher, of, of every rabbi, is to make you a rabbi, to give you the tools so that one day that you can surpass me. And I don't think that's the approach that rabbis bring to the table on YouTube. It seems like they're always talking down to you. You know, I mean, can I study the books you study? No, 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 you know, I'm a rabbi, you have to listen to me. You don't have to listen to me. You guys could challenge me all day long. As a matter of fact, I think it makes it more interesting, and John could attest to this, when people respond, when it's an actual conversation. Try to have a conversation with a rabbi on YouTube, he's gonna be like, this is your answer, accept the answer, now go away, you know? I wanna be challenged. I'm not married to Judaism, and I think that is also a very controversial statement, but I think every teacher has to make such a statement whether we're not married to our belief systems that we'll convert to any other belief system that will make us better people. That's more ethically sound. I've been Jewish for over 23 years. I don't think I'm going anywhere, but we, sh that we should never stop searching. Amen. Oh.